Thank you, Marla, for that beautiful music. Yes. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And for those that are worshiping with us online, the reason we're laughing so much about that is because it's a bit chilly in here this morning. The furnace is not working properly, and it's cold, and so um, we're going to get a little bit of a fire going inside us, hopefully. Um, so welcome to worship. Glad that all of you are here. Uh, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, I want to say a special welcome to you. Um, today is Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. Um, due to the temperature in here, we're going to modify the service a little bit. So some of the stuff we were going to do with baptism this week, we will do next week. It is also Holy Communion Sunday, and we will have Holy Communion. The elements are prepared here as well. So I will let you know what the alterations are to the service as we go along here. Um, and I want to invite you to stand as you're able to uh, join Kyle in the call to worship. We come to the water to celebrate God's goodness. We come to the water to celebrate God's love. We come to the water to remember that we are beloved, cherished, and forgiven. Please join me in the opening hymn, Since Jesus Came in My Heart. God, we thank you today for the gift of baptism and how it unites us as one by the Holy Spirit. We thank you that before we do anything, you claim us as beloved, surrounding us in community, and nurture us to be your people. As we celebrate the meaning of baptism today, we ask once again for your cleansing love to wash over us. Help us to remember that we all belong to the body of Christ. We each have a special role in your family, and we are sent out into the world to do good 
and resist evil in your name. Amen. think about things that go together so like a light and a light switch go together right you don't have a light without a light switch of some sort it has to be some way to turn it on and turn it off right can you think of anything else that goes together like that <laughs> for many people peanut butter and jelly for some a furnace and being comfortable <laughs> Yeah, things that go together. And, and prior, once upon a time, people were baptized by a man named John the Baptist. John the Baptist, Baptist baptized people with water. And water is lots of things. Water we drink every day to keep us alive, right? We need water. Our body has a great percentage of water. We also use water to, to cleanse us, to take a shower or a bath to clean up, right? Lots of different things we use water for. Well, John baptized people with water and, and, and asked people to repent. And repent is turning to God. And so for those that are a little bit older that can drive, all around there's lots of signs that say no U-turns, lots of places. Repent is taking a U-turn. So in our faith, we have permission to take U-turns back to God all the time. To take a U-turn. So repent. So the baptism with water was a baptism of, of repentance and forgiveness of sins. But John also said that someone else was coming after him who was more powerful than him. Who was going to baptize not only with water, but with the Holy Spirit. So kind of like a light and a light switch. For us, water and the Holy Spirit come together. We're baptized by water and the Spirit. So I'm going to read to you um, this scripture here from the Desmond Tutu Children's Bible. This is a story that's told in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And this is kind of a Matthew and Luke version of it. It says, Jesus' cousin John wore clothes made from camel's hair. He was kind of a weird guy. John lived on locusts and wild honey. I don't think I'd want to eat those things. He was called the baptizer because he was a holy man who called people to the river to wash them clean of their wrongdoing. God wants your hearts to be clean as well as your bodies, he told them. Turn your cruelty into kindness, your selfishness into sharing. But how, the crowd asked, if you have two coats, share one. If you have one loaf of bread, share half. As he took them into the river, John said, I baptize you with water. But someone far greater than I will come soon. He will baptize you with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Jesus came to the river and asked to be baptized. John said, no, Jesus, you should be baptizing me. Jesus insisted this is God's plan. So John led Jesus into the river and baptized him. As Jesus came out of the water, he saw the heavens open up and the Holy Spirit spread its wings over him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son who fills me with great joy. And so we have this baptism here, not only of the water cleansing, but the Holy Spirit coming to Jesus. And coming inside him and filling him. And guess what the Holy Spirit did after this? Mark tells us it sent Jesus into the wilderness. It sent him out at the beginning of his ministry. So the Holy Spirit came in him and sent him out. Two things that also go together. And when we are baptized, 
we also are baptized with water and a cleansing and a repentance and remembrance of forgiveness and that we are also baptized with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes in us to lead us and to guide us and also to remind us of something really important that I never, ever, ever, ever want you to forget. That sounds kind of important, right? Guess what it is. I want you to remember that you are a beloved child of God. That means that God loves you. God loves you. God loves you on those days when you're really happy and joyful and doing everything you're supposed to do. God loves you on those days when you're cantankerous, when maybe you haven't done all the things that you know what you need to do. God loves you. You are God's beloved children. God claims you as family. God claims you as family and calls you beloved. And I never, ever, ever want you to forget that. And, and think about this story here. This is before Jesus starts his ministry. Guess what he had done at this point? God claimed him as beloved and loved. And he'd done nothing. Nothing. Nada. Nothing at this point. He was loved. And that's how he started his ministry, from this place of knowing that he was loved. And that's my hope and prayer for you, for me, for all of us, that we never, ever forget. We are loved by God. Not because of something we've done or haven't done, because God loves us. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit and the reminder that we are forgiven and we are loved just as we are. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's join in singing. We're going to sing the first verse of Sweet Hour of Prayer. I want to invite you to be in prayer for all the persons and situations that are listed on our prayer list. And I also want to invite you to share if there's joys or concerns that you would like to share this morning. Tracy? Um, there's a 22-year-old young person that attends um, Crossroads Church in um he has a rare condition and they've been trying to do open heart surgery on him and his body keeps rejecting the medicine that they're trying to prepare him for. Um, they had to do another procedure um, yesterday just to try to get more oxygen to, to his heart and they're going to try to do the procedure on Tuesday. His name is Jared. If we could keep him in our prayers. If you'll keep my sister Jody in, in your prayers, um, she is the one who has cancer, and she also is having problems with her esophagus, and they went in this week and to have a procedure to 
um, expand it, but there's an ulcer in there that they've biopsied because it hasn't been healing. And so she's just had a lot of problems with swallowing and makes it difficult um, to eat and, and to do some things you need to do to live. So um, just keep her in your prayers that that is not cancerous and that it would heal on its own. Ron? I just, I just got word this morning, a good friend of mine, uh, actually his son was involved with the Blue Angels when they were here this summer. His wife has been having a terrible time. She's in the ICU in North Carolina. Uh, they ruled out a bunch of issues, but they have yet to determine what is causing. She has a lot of fluid around some of her organs. So her name is Nancy. If we could keep her in mind, I'd appreciate it. Mary Lee, can I share? Yeah. Mary Lee's cousin, who we've been praying for, Gracie May, passed away this week. So please keep Mary Lee and all of her family in your prayers. Are there other joys or concerns today? Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we come seeking your presence. Warm our hearts this day and every day, O oh Lord. Lord, as we breathe in, we're reminded that you give us the breath of life. As we exhale, help us to let go of all of those things that wear us down. For Lord, we know that you are with us to carry our burdens with us. You are with us to take those burdens that we need not carry any longer, that we can leave them with you, O oh Lord. Lord, we come with thanksgiving for, for the reminders of your presence in our life and in our community, O oh Lord. Lord, we give thanks that you name us and claim us as your beloved children. Not because of what all we have or haven't done, but because you love us unconditionally, O oh Lord. We give thanks that your love is so abundant that it fills us up and leaves us with love to share with others also, O oh Lord. Lord, we come today with this thanksgiving on our hearts. We come today having begun a new year, thinking about the things that we are thankful for for last year and our hopes and dreams for this year, O oh Lord. Lord, we give thanks for your spirit that helps God-sized dreams come true, O oh Lord. Help us to dream with you this year, O oh Lord. And Lord, as we dream with you, we also ask that you would put your healing presence on the lives of persons like Jared and Jody and Nancy, O oh Lord. Lord, that you would offer comfort to Gracie May's family, O oh Lord, and that you would offer comfort and that you would spur us to comfort those that are mourning the loss of a loved one this day, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to skip that. We're skipping all those. Skip that. There we go. 
for those that are joining us a little bit later, we are moving through the, the um, service in a little different today because it's very cold in here. And so we are um, going to come back to the baptism and remembering our baptism next Sunday. But I do want to invite us to partake in the sacraments of Holy Communion. In the United Methodist Church, we have two sacraments. One is baptism and one is communion. These are rituals that we participate in, things that help to remind us of the Holy and connect us to the Holy Spirit as well. You need not be a member of this church or any church to participate in Holy Communion. All are worthy to come to the communion table and all are welcome to come to the communion table. It's Jesus who offers us these elements. It's Jesus who welcomes all of us to come. And when we come, we'll invite folks to, to walk up the center aisle and then to go back by the side aisles. And there are um, baskets or will be baskets up front for cups. And if you'd like us to come to you, we can also bring communion to you. The, west, the best way to prepare ourselves for Holy Communion is to begin with the time of confession. And so to be able to share those, the conversation with God about maybe if there's some things that you need to, to clear the air with God, we're going to ask you to, we're going to start with a, a time of silent confession and then we'll join in confession together. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I want to invite you to turn to someone near you and to offer them words of peace. Offer the peace of Christ. Peace be with you, right? <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting. You alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where Christ was born. And in your signs and witnesses in every age and through all the world, you, O Lord, have led your people far places to this light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, 
and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus came himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to God, and he broke the bread. Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the meal was over, Jesus took the cup, the cup like we all have on our tables, a cup there, and he said, this cup, this cup represents a new covenant. It's my blood that is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this cup of love and remember me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let's pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And let's pray together again the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite John to come serve with me. The table is set. Come and eat. Come and receive.
we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that me we go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's stand and sing the first verse of I Surrender All. I have a couple of gifts for you as we begin the new year. One is a bookmark that has daily scripture readings that go along with the sermon series that we're doing here about roots. And so the first ones are about baptism. The other thing I have for you is a star word. And some of you may be familiar with this. It's something we have done in previous years as the beginning of a new year. But there are a list of words that are on pieces of paper up here on on stars, and I'll bring them back to the, the back of the sanctuary. And if you're worshiping with us online and would like Kathy to pick one for you, uh, please let her know that in the chat or send me an email at Hopewell UMC Groveport. Oh, Hopewell, I can't speak right now. Hopewell UMC Groveport at gmail.com or Pastor Wendy HS at gmail.com, and I will get one for you. But the Magi took a chance and trusted the star that they saw. They trusted that it was God in their midst that was leading them somewhere that they needed to go. And ultimately, that star led the, the Magi to Jesus. And star words are a contemplative spiritual tool that offer us a way to look for God in our midst, both actively and in hindsight. And so we are invited, like the Magi, to use the resources that we have to us, including some creative prayer practice and intention words for the new year in order to experience God more fully in our midst. And so I invite you to to choose a word at random, Um, from the basket, and then to practice the spiritual discipline of receiving, much like we do with communion, we come with our hands open to receive, and let go and to trust that God is present in the word that you have drawn. And so I encourage you to draw a word and then put it somewhere where you can see it. And I think it's quite interesting that the word that I just picked out of here is repair. And certainly our furnace needs some repairs. And so uh, the spirit is alive and at work in here, just in case you had any questions about that. There's a lot of words in this basket, and this is the one that I picked out. So use the word as a guide throughout the year. So put it somewhere that you can see it every day. And just think, just be mindful of how God might be speaking to you through that word. And I know that I've picked out different words every year for several years now, and God has certainly spoken to me in some important ways through the words that I have have, have chosen, that in some ways they've, they've chosen me. So I hope that they will bring you joy. Um, and, and I've prayed over these words. I pray that they are a, a joy for you and that they would help you to grow closer to God as well. Um, and so I have those things for you as you leave today. And I want to thank you all for the Amazon gift cards that you gave my family and I for Christmas. Thank you for your generosity with that. 
Um, I want to draw your attention to the announcements that are included with the bulletin. There are ways that we can live out our faith. Um, we receive this love and this grace from God, and we are sent out into the world. And in the bulletin, there are announcements. There are ways that we can live out this faith in the world through the serving at our local food pantries, through, through giving of food and, and other items to, to those in need in the community, through coming together and to studying scriptures together on Tuesday evenings or on Zoom or Sunday mornings um, at 9.30 here with adults or ch and children um, before church happens. Are there other announcements that I need to, Tracy? Um, I'd, like I'd like to thank everybody for your participation in the adopt a family um, yeah. We yeah. we took the... Um, they came and picked it up, and they also attended on Christmas Eve. And then we had Mike and I had purchased a doll baby that didn't come in from Amazon until like the last minute. And the mom sent me a picture of all the kids on Christmas morning, and she was very, very grateful and very thankful and happy that there was groceries included because times are pretty hard for them right now. So I just really want to thank you. Yeah. And that's the way that we live out our faith in the community is by sharing the resources that we have. And I'm, I'm grateful that we're a congregation that does this at the holidays and in adopting a family. We're also a congregation that does this year round through, through the support, particularly of our food pantries. Ron? And I'd also want to thank all of you because um, through your generosity and that of other churches, we supplied uh, 400 meals between Christmas and Thanksgiving to the uh, members of the Asheville Food Pantry. And thank you so much. We blessed a lot of people. That is a real joy. Thank you for sharing that. Are there other announcements that you'd like to make? As you go forth from here, you go forth out into the mission field. You are sent out. Sent out, may you follow the light that the Holy Spirit is offering to you. May you follow that light. And as you go out into the mission field, know that there are people that need someone to listen to them. There are people who need a little bit of hope. There are people who need to be reminded or to know maybe for the first time that they are loved and beloved. May they find in us to be the most generous people. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's sing Go Now in Peace. <laughs>